Well, as Isaiah 55 on the front of your bulletin says, God's word will not return void. And this is one of the theme verses of the Gideons. It will accomplish that which he pleased and prosper in the things which we sent it. Today we have with us a very good friend of mine, a personal brother in Christ, someone who has been a counselor to me at times when my heart has been heavy and the way has been rough. He's been a friend. I love you, Brother Lee. His dear wife is with us today as well. What a sweet-spirited woman and what a great person she is in Christ as well. They love the Lord, and that's why we're family. You know, we, we're family. I don't know if you necessarily want to accept me that, is that, that I, we're family. But, <laughs> but when, I, when I scheduled the Gideon speaker, I texted Brother Lee, and I said, could you send me Bev Gautier's number because I believe he's the coordinator. And uh, so he called me, and he said, uh, well, he said, you know, I forget exactly how it was, but like uh, they couldn't find anybody else, uh, so they're going to send me. So, and I said, well, praise God. Brother Lee has spoken at a pastor appreciation here. He's also spoken as a Gideon before. Brother Lee is also uh, an attendee and I believe a member of the, are you a member down at Moore Union? Moore Union a Church where uh, Brother David Yarbrough is the pastor. Great man. Some of you have probably known he's the manager out at the carpenter shop. G good man of God. Loves the Lord. And uh, we appreciate that. But today, Lee is here to speak to us. Gideon's International. Let's welcome Lee Logwood. I'm going to do my best to let the Spirit lead me because uh, if we don't, nothing's going to be accomplished today. Church, what you just experienced in these few moments, the world does not know that. They, they don't know who to go to. They, they don't have a, a family like this that can pray for them and encourage them and support them. And, and, and as a body of believers, we need to never forget that because there is a world out there that is hurting. They are struggling. They're afraid. They're worried. And as your pastor has already said, here it is. This is the answer not only for this life, but the one to come. It is inspired. It is infallible. It is inerrant. I don't care what any atheist or agnostic may say about it. Here is where we find hope. Here is where paradise is revealed. Here is where hell is to be shunned in the very word of God. A 13-year-old girl walks up in one of our local middle schools. That means here in Lee County, Harnett County. The Gideons have put a table with Bibles on it got a sign saying free gift because our government says we can't witness to them we can't talk to them so we put it down there and they have the opportunity to pick it up 13 year old girl walks up there and she's looking through it and she's she's reading and she's looking and she's studying and then she walks over to one of the Gideons that are standing there observing everything and she wasn't being funny it wasn't a snide remark she said, who is Jesus? See, that's, that's right out of the doorsteps of your church and my church. Who is Jesus? Central Carolina Community College. A Gideon is getting ready to go to the distribution where, again, table has Bibles on it. A free gift. It's the last day of the distribution. It's the last shift. The Gideon is knowing there's going to be very few that will even come and pick one up. And many of them will say, I already got one. And he was dirty from working all day. And as he was preparing, he says, what, what is it going to accomplish? A handful may get one. And as he goes to the college, he looks on a the table. There's a piece of paper there. He thinks it's trash. He, he, he gets ready to pick it up, throw it away. He realized it's, it's, it's been folded neatly. And being fleshly, he still thought one of these college students had written a nasty letter of why we Gideons shouldn't be uh, encouraging these children to read, read the Word of God. And he unfolded it, and what it was, it was God telling him, this is why 
He said, you men are doing a good work giving out the word of God. It is greatly needed. Signed, a troubled soul. A 50-some-year-old lady, I, I say this carefully, because with the makeup and the hair color, it's hard for us to understand the age. <coughs> but we were in a small little college right on the sidewalk in, in Queens, New York, and everybody that came by, we offered them a New Testament. A lady took one. She walked about two steps away. She turned around, and she come back. She had it held in both hands. And she said, I want you to know this is the first Bible I have ever owned in my life. You see, it was a free gift given from churches just like yourself. Today, it's not about the Gideons International. It is about the word of God going forth that God ordained that when people would, would get close to it, he would draw himself to it. If it's in a room, in a drawer, God draw with people that are searching that are looking when it's put in the hand it may be forgotten and put in the shelf or a backpack for years but something happens in their life and God says remember that little book and they start going and reading it and then the author of that book the Lord Jesus Christ shows up every time it is opened one vision is not a numerical vision because in the Gideons International we had a goal in 2020 to achieve 120 million scriptures a year. But what happened over time was many in the ministry began concentrating on that numerical number and forgetting about the spiritual people and the reality that there's a lost and dying world. And so this one vision is a refocus into the spiritual focus that is not about the numbers, it's about the souls. It is about Jesus Christ saving the lost people from a devil's hell. But I will share you our numbers in just a minute. But this journey started in uh, over 120 years ago. Samuel Hill and John Nicholson had to share a room in a hotel. The room was overbooked, believe that. They found out that they were Christians. And so they started sharing and they said, wouldn't it be good if we could place a Bible in the hotel so that all the traveling salesmen could, could have a Bible so they could read? And it was to protect their personal testimony. Because even in 1900, there were prostitutes, there was gambling, there was alcohol that these Christian men would face. And, the, and the many times they didn't have a place to put a Bible so they could have one in that room and, and read and let God talk to them. And so 1908 is when that journey began of the first Bible that was placed in the United States. In North Carolina, since June the 1st of this year, we've placed over 480,000 scriptures. Here in Lee County and Harnett County, over 11,000 scriptures. Worldwide, since June the 1st this year, 58 million have been placed around the world. Since 1908, over 2 billion have been placed. Now remember, it's not about the numbers. Those are potential souls that will have an opportunity to reach the word of God and be able to know Jesus Christ. We're in 200 countries, and we're placing God's word in over 100 languages. Yet I want you to understand, out of those 200 countries, 180 of them need some or all financial help, simply meaning they can't buy the Bibles. And that's why we here in America come to churches like you to share a report of what God is doing, not the Gideons, but what God is doing around the world. But yet there is a need for people to have help to buy the Bibles. A letter from NC State Fair. Anybody go to that last year? The fun the rides, the eats. I want to share you a letter because the Gideons give out about twenty or 30,000 of these little New Testaments with a witness at the state fair every year. This is from a mother who was concerned about her little boy. Thank you for the little Bible you gave my son today. He was in tears last night and could not fall asleep because he was so worried 
about all the evil that is in the world today. Even when we prayed and talked about how God is in charge of all things and will protect us, he was still so upset that some people choose evil over good. He was sad that they could not see how God is good and would help them. I so appreciate the Bible which makes it simple for him to find just the right verse in a time of need. I hope it will guide him as he grows into a young man. Thank you for your work. Much love and prayers, Leo's mom. Because you see, in every one of these little New Testaments, there is a place that we call helps in time of need, worried, anxious, afraid. Even the atheist sometimes is worried and afraid, and they can read, and then the Holy Spirit comes and reveals himself to them. Anybody remember a storm last year called Hurricane Florence? Okay, everybody knows. We got a taste of it, didn't we? Anybody remember the pictures of the convoy coming to be the rescue to restore power? Okay. Did anybody remember that the Gideons were there just a few months before that in Wilmington, North Carolina, giving out over 60,000 scriptures? Oh, y'all didn't hear that, did you? See, we were not supposed to go there, but as we listened to the Holy Spirit, we were going to Charlotte, North Carolina. God says, no, you, you need to go to Wilmington, North Carolina. And the evidence was that the guy that was in charge of it went over there, and he was going around. He went to a hotel and uh, met a man in a bathroom and shared the gospel in the bathroom with the man. And the man got saved in the bathroom, and they got it on the floor in the bathroom, and God said, this is where you need to be. And the first meeting of that blitz when 250-some Gideons and our wives, auxiliary members, were there getting ready to, to blitz. Y'all gentlemen understand blitz. We line up, and we go after that quarterback to annihilate him, to put him on the ground. <laughs> well, when we blitz an area, that's what we want to do. We want to put Satan on the ground and, and lift up Jesus Christ. <clears throat> The Blitz leader made a statement that he didn't really understand. We found out after the fact because he told us as we were sitting there, he said, there's a hurricane coming. What he was talking about when God's word went across Wilmington, that 60-some thousand, it was going to stir that place up. Little did he know he was forecasting a hurricane was going to come. And after the fact, we realized that many had a copy of God's Word where they could find that help in time of need. When a disaster strikes like Katrina, we went down there. They wanted water. They wanted food. And then they wanted a Bible to find the hope because they were living in fear. And this is the cure-all right here. His name is Jesus Christ. Oh, and then we went to Charlotte two weeks ago. We don't even have the final figures now, but right over 40,000 were placed in the Queen City in more ways than one. And we wanted to make it a teen city for Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and it wasn't placing just a Bible in a room. It was actually witnessing the people. And many people came to know Jesus Christ, homeless people, people living in a hotel because they've lost everything and their last few dollars is going into a room and they're desperate. And we tell them there's one that has hope and has answers and his name is Jesus Christ. And can you know him? Yes, you can right now. This physical year, we've been to Indonesia. We've been to Kenya. We've been to Bolivia. We've been to Malawi. On an average year, 12 to 16 international scripture blitzes are going around the world, and each one will average anywhere from 40,000, and the record was in the Philippines about three years ago, 1.5 million. And that was in two weeks. And yet I have a, a pastor friend of ours that I was telling Pastor Norris before church started, Pastor Scott Yao, 
went to the Philippines about three or four weeks ago, and he said, I went to a church, and the only Bible the people had to read was on Sunday morning when they put it on the screen or wrote it on the chalkboard. He said, then they allowed us with pastors to go to schools, and there wasn't a Bible. In another school, there wasn't a Bible. In another school, and there wasn't a Bible. And he came back, and he said, I understand now. There is a need. And in Monterey, Mexico, oh, nobody wants to talk about Mexico, do they? Put a wall up, keep them out, right? Hmm? I'm not into politics, but the last time I, I, I read the book, it said that Jesus died for all. And we went there last February, and we went to this university. Listen, 70,000 students. We were there from 6.30 in the morning to 6.30 at night, and we gave out over 59,000 opportunities for people to know Jesus Christ. There were many that prayed a sinner's prayer. Many had questions. Many wanted to know the answers of this life. What was their future? Here it is. Read it. Come and know the one. And then this precious little girl right here, we were in... A little old school and they were coming out by the hundreds not thousands and I gave this little lady a, a New Testament in Spanish she walked off I was giving more and I, I keep looking back and forth because they're coming all over the place and I noticed she was she was coming back and she got right up to me and she said would you like a cupcake and I thought <laughs> do I look like I need a cupcake but I realized two things real quick. She spoke very good English, and that Spanish testament was laying on those cupcakes. I said, can I show you something? I showed her the helps in the front, and then I went to that back, and I said, can you read that? See, I can't read Spanish. I can't speak Spanish. I barely get English out, but I knew, wh I knew what it was. It said, God loves you, John 3, 16. Amen. Oh, and th then we get down to the bad stuff. It says, oh are sinners and I said have you ever done anything that was a sin and the crocodile tears started welling up and I said oh but God has a remedy for sin read that for me for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ his son and I love that last verse down there on the bottom. It says, all may be saved now. I said, Romans 10, 13, that's my favorite verse because it included me. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I said, would you like to do that? And Anneli Segura bowed her head, and I led her in a simple childlike faith of prayer. Lord, I'm a sinner. I understand your gospel message that you love me and you died for me. You sent your son for me. Will you adopt me into your family and make me your child? I thank you, Lord, for saving me and for forgiving me of my sins. Lord, help me now to live for you until the day you call me home. And we bowed her head, lifted it up, a smile across her face. See, I have a sister. <laughs> my wife won't know who was that girl I had my arm around with. <laughs> but I have a sister in Monterey, Mexico that I probably won't ever see again until we step in the portals of heaven and it'll be worth it all. I'm going to close up. Mozambique, Africa. I probably shared with this when I came before. I went on a scripture blitz international to Mozambique, Africa to the city of Beira in 2012. This was Pastor Tony. This was his church. The roof was about to collapse. He said on any Sunday morning, there'd be 100 inside, 100 outside. And he was one of the few that had a Bible. So they had to come to church to hear the word of God. A businessman a couple years ago gave him some money to enable him to fix that roof. But probably something else we didn't hear in the news in the last few weeks. There was a cyclone that hit the area of Beira, where over a million people are. And this is his church today. I got that picture about a week ago. 
we still contact each other. And he said, brother, the need is great. And in capital letters, he said, I am crying out. See, not only did the church get destroyed, that building, not the church, but most of his congregation lost everything. Many in his congregation lost family members, neighborhood people, destroyed. Now there's a cholera outbreak in that area, and he was crying out for help. You see, this is Pastor Tony in 2012. He's a teacher at a university. He took off the whole week we were there, seven days, to translate for us, to help us get around. He did not go to school except one part of a day because his students were taking in an exam because he saw the need that his people would get a copy of God's word. Where he is sitting at with that little fellow with the New Testament in his hand is where he received his New Testament many years ago and Jesus Christ saved him called him to be a pastor and he was able to put one in that boy's hand so we have a a dollar 25 investment that saved the young man that god called to be a pastor and not just pastor of a church he actually has started two other churches and now the potential that god would call this young man with an investment of a buck 25 This is why we come to churches. If you take the average wage in America, ball it up, average it out, over $22 and change. Tanzania, they make $0.68 cent an hour. Mozambique is $0.11 cent an hour. Mexico is two forty three. Simply meaning, church, this little New Testament for $1.25, they will never have one. They will never own one. They will never read one. Odds are they'll never know him, the one that loved him and died for him. So how can you help? Number one is pray. Number two is join. I see some men in here. I got some applications. I'm serious about it. God may be calling you to help us reach more. The average age in North Carolina of a Gideon is 67 and a half. God is calling us home. We're having very few young men that are joining. We have what we call a Gideon Bible app, just like any other Bible app. I have some cards. You can download it. It has the full Bible. It has the help in time of need. It has the plan of salvation, just like our scriptures do. But what it has more than that, it has over 1,200 languages that you and your going about might find somebody from Russia or China. You find out their language, and in many of the languages, it actually will play it for you. Many times when people from Russia and China hear that, they start weeping. They say, that's my language. And they can have the Bible read to them in their own language. Over 1,200 languages. Maybe you can't join, but you can become a friend of the Gideons. You'll pray for us. Or maybe you'll become a financial partner. I have some of these brochures I would be glad to show you. Last but not least, you can give financially. <coughs> Let me explain that. You're not giving us any money. What I'm asking you to do today is help us buy Bibles. But there is a sense of urgency. Because John 9, 4, Jesus said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, because the night cometh when no man can work. Next slide, I want you to see that. See, the clock goes fast. The sun is coming. The sun is setting. And we have that short little span in between that birth date and that last date. What are we going to do with Jesus Christ? Are we going to hold it in and not let that light shine? Or are we going to open our arms and say, Lord, send me, do what you want with me? That's what we all need to be saying. That's what I try and say every day. 
Lord, whatever it is that you want me to do, let me do it. God has blessed us. What are we doing about sharing that message? Pastor Norris, thank you. Church, pray for us. Let's shine that light. Thank you.